name is Fina. Uh, I'm, I work at the SPD Digital uh, as a software engineer. Tonight, I would like to share with you, um, like probably like more like uh, walk through with a live demo with all of you. This uh, one of the famous web uh, server side Swift called Faber. But specifically on uh, Faber Fashion 3, uh, why? Because I think it's so cool. Okay, <laughs> can I uh, like know how many of you have heard Faber before? Wow, okay, uh, quite a lot. So uh, some of you might have uh, asked why Faber, right? I have this uh, graph that is presented by Tanner Nelson, the creator of Faber himself. Uh, he, he actually presented this in TriSwift Conference New York uh, in 2017. Um, his argument is that uh, as a Swift developer, uh, you probably want to build an app and you need a backend. So you have a choice like CloudKit, Game, Game Center API, or Firebase uh, as a backend as a service. Uh, or on the other hand, in terms of the functionality, you can use uh, very advanced stuff from uh, ExpressJS or not, uh, or Ruby on Rails that can do almost everything. But the learning step for you is very high because you have to learn a uh, different set of skills altogether. So that's where IBM Kitura or Vapor uh, comes in, whereby. Uh, you will still get to use Swift, but you can still build the same functionality as those traditional frameworks like Ruby on Rails or Node.js. So I highly uh, recommend you to uh, read the the post about his talk here. Um, all right. So next, I'm not gonna uh, waste another time. Uh, we will jump right into the setup, so I hope you can follow it through with me. Uh, the first thing that you need to do is that you need a Swift 4.1, and for Vapor, they actually provide a very convenient check, which is this command line. And when you hit it, they will actually tell whether your system is compatible or not with the Vapor tree. If you have difficulties in setting up the Swift 4.1 in the command line, you can use this uh, Swift ENV, in which I'm also using it right now. If you have it installed, you can uh, choose uh, what is the global Swift version that you want to choose. I find that the command line and the Xbox, uh, not Xbox, the Xcode, are two different things, meaning if you are using Xcode 9.1 or 9.2 uh, like me, you chances are you are still running on Swift 4.0, right? And it cannot uh, run, it cannot uh, do vapor. I'm gonna need to switch back, yeah. Uh, and you chances are you need the Swift 4.1 toolchain yeah, to run the paper, for example, um, when once you launch your Xcode, you can go to the preference and under the components. And if you have the toolchain installed, you will see the Swift 4.1 release being used. And nevertheless, once you install this, it doesn't mean that your command line will run on the 4.1. You need the Swift ENV again to set it. All right. Uh, so once you have this set up. You can use the Vapor toolbox to kickstart your Vapor um, uh, version. For example, I already installed uh, using this uh, Brew install Vapor, and you can also do Brew upgrade Vapor whenever you want. Uh, the current one is version 3.1.4, and this is how you generate a new project paper new for example awesome API dash dash branch equals to beta and then you cd to that folder oops sorry I get ahead of myself All right so for example I already inside the the project folder it is because uh, sorry it's because um before this I was trying like after I do the paper new 
I actually uh, execute this thing called vapor xcode dash y to generate the xcode project file. And it takes some time to generate the uh, or fetching the dependencies that vapor needs, right? But once you get it, they will actually open the xcode for you and you are able to run it. What you need to do is that when you when you open it, right, uh, usually the default target is this package. So all you need to do is just change it to run and, yeah, and click run. And it should run the surfer. Okay, like as you can see here, it's actually running on localhost 8080. Right. In that case, why is it not found? I'm going to explain it soon. Anyway, I can speak this. <laughs> Alright, why is it not found? That is because um, we're going to jump into the next topic that is about the routes and the parameters. The routes basically explain that um, the URL that you want to hit, or uh, usually we call it the endpoint, right? Um, you can see in this file called routes.swift, this there's the router.gethello uh, and just returning a simple string called hello world. This is exactly what I'm, I need to do. I just need to append it with slash hello. And then I'm going to see the hello world here. So everything that you define in the routes.swift actually uh, will be reflected on the user side. Now, if uh, you want to add more parameter, or let's say you want to capture more parameter, I already prepared the shortcut. Um, if you want to like, capture a hello slash somebody as a string, and then what you need to do is just um, adding one more router, and then you capture the string, convert it as a parameter, then return it to the user. I should say this. Right, um, and when I run this, I should be able to capture, let's say, for example, hello, Stephanie, and like that. You see, the beautiful, uh, the beautiful part of using Swift is that you know that uh, if the parameter is a string, you can still use the string function from Swift. So you don't really need to find out like, oh, I want to use Ruby on Rails. How do I process string in Ruby, on Ra in Ruby right? Or in JavaScript. And let's say if I put a breakpoint here, and I, wait, sorry. And I capture again, I reload again. It's actually stopping at the breakpoint. So it's really nice to use Xcode as IDE. Um, because we are so used to it, right? And on a daily basis, we always use Xcode for, and you can continue again. You can even inspect the memory that they're using. I mean, it's, isn't it cool, right? <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Uh, the next question will be like, what about if you want to capture more parameters? Um, what I mean by more parameters is that, uh, for example, I want to capture um, three three parameter string int and string, right? Uh, the the conclusion is that the extraction order matters. What do I mean by that is that uh, with this code, if I have three parameter that I want to capture, string in string, but when I capture it as string string int, it will throw me an error. Wait, what happened here? Oh, the, the next. I have to get rid of the next. Alright, um, if I rerun it again, and let's say I'm capturing two str uh, parameter, one is string and int, I can go to hello uh, Stephanie slash like 21. And I'm capturing it properly, right? But if I add it some more with, let's say I want to eat, 
it's going to return me an error saying that invalid parameters type string, string in. This is because I'm the extraction order matters should be string in string rather than string string in. So if I switch this and rewrite it again, I should be able to get it like that. So that's uh, pretty much about uh, routes and parameter. Any questions so far? If you want to ask questions, please feel free to ask any, stop me anytime. Um, the next is uh, how about returning a JSON? We definitely need to know how to return a JSON uh, form of uh, API, right? To return a JSON is very simple. You, can, you just need to create an object as a model, which is instruct and create your route. Let's go to the example right now. For example, I'm going to create uh, a struct called top content data which has a title, type, sequence, start time, uh, and I just need to generate the route. The route basically is saying that if you hit slash top, I'm going to create a top object and return it to me. Every time you do this, you have to reload again. Reload again, and this time I have to say slash top. And it's just really simple, as simple as that, right? That is how uh, you can return a JSON. Uh, the next thing is, uh, I'm going to need to touch on the Vapor Tree asynchronous architecture. Why? Because it's one of the biggest changes since Vapor 2 and Vapor 3. Because when Vapor 3 has an asynchronous architecture, they got a lot of uh, performance boost and they build it on top of Apple Swift Neo, uh, the net, net networking library. And to make use of that, you simply need to re wrap your request in promise. Uh, and that means that, for example, if you used to return an array of top, right now you just need to wrap it in a future generic array of top. Just like that, yeah. And then, uh, a simple tips on how you work with the futures, which I got from Ray Wenderlich Vapor, uh, Vapor Tree book, chapter four, is that you use flat map, flat map when you want to return a future. You use map when you want to return type other than future. You use transform when you not you know the future is going to be completed, but you will ignore the result. For example, when you delete an object. You simply delete it and not returning the same uh, object to the user. You just say transform to HTTP status OK to give a, a 200 status, saying that, oh, I already did it. Yeah, just like that. And then uh, data persistence. Um, I should show you first how uh, Vapor handle this by default. You can see in the configure.swift, right? They, by default, when you kickstart a new paper project, they use SQLite, and they're just saying, like, if you don't have a SQLite underscore path in your environment variable, they're going to store it in the memory. Well, that means that anything that we post to the API will just be lost, right? So we have to find a way to process it. Now, um, one of the beautiful things about Fakebot is that they have the Fluent ORM that supports SQLite, uh, MySQL, and PostgreSQL. I think there are more. I could be wrong. Uh, but let's say for simplicity of this demo, I'm just going to use SQLite. And so I can delete this and replace it with SQLite path that I want called db.sqlite. Um, okay, so right now, I don't have any db.sqlite, and once I run this, it's going to create the db.sqlite uh, for me. So right now, we are ready to sort of like make the creation persisted somewhere in the database. However, just for a su suggestion from the creator of Vapor itself, do not use 
uh, SQLite in the production. I'm not sure whether <laughs> that's agreeable or not. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Mm. So, without further ado, I'm gonna like demonstrate to you how do we uh, do the crack demo, the create, update, and delete. First, uh, what you need to do is you need to create a top model, just like how we did with the uh, the parameter just now. And you also need to create a file called Tox Controller to handle to handle all the get and post method. Uh, one tip for me is that you need to generate the Swift file from the terminal so that you get the right file target. What I mean by file target is that you know in in this every Swift file, right, they are attached to uh, one target membership here. So by creating it from the command line, this will help you to uh, get the oops sorry get the right target the TIL touch sources app models swift and touch sources and control so after you create this, you typically need to do another paper code. The reason is because it's not instantly show or updated here. So this is the reason why you have to regenerate the uh, Xcode approach again. And they should... Okay, I should stop it. Generating one one. Okay. So they're just gonna do a load, and now you see your file here. Top controller and the top. Right. Let me go back. Okay. Now we're going to do the top model. Luckily, I already prepared some good stuff. Mm. Top class. Now, when you create a top, it should be, um, you should import the paper. You should also inf import the Fluent SQLite. There are other, if you are using MySQL, they actually have the My MySQLite. I don't know, the autocomplete is not working here, but it should be. I think it should be like that. Yeah. I think this is correct. No, no, no. Oh, oh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that. They also support PostgreSQL. Ah. <laughs> you already. <laughs> Alright, anyway, uh, it should be a subclass of a uh, codable where you can define your ID and you should create a constructor for that and you should uh, subclass from SQLite model, migration, content, and parameter, that's by default. Uh, actually the explanation is that uh, migration is for the database migration, content is when you want to create a top, they will need to map it to a content and then when you want to do like uh, get one top by ID, they will need to do the parameter. Um, and then for the, let's see, for the edit to migration section in configure, oh yeah, um, in the configure, they actually have a migration here, you just add your model there, uh, so it will be top self, and then next is the tox controller. Top controller will be okay by default. A top controller struct is uh, con uh, needs to confirm to protocol route collection that is you only need to implement one function called boot. The boot 
we'll have something like red rot will be uh, rotor dot groups and I want to say this uh, to access the API you need to use something like slash API slash talks and then you register all the handler here for example I'm going to register uh, for get all handler it's the same thing with uh, I want to get all the talk and then after that you register it if it is a get uh, if it is a get, use get all handler, right? As simply as that. And then, how do the routes function know that you actually have that controller? Is that is that you have to register it in the routes.swift. So the routes.swift will know that oh, I have this uh, router route register from this task controller so now if we run this and I'm going to use rested to test it get all top so this test is going to do an API call to my local host and I am actually getting a 200 ok but it's an empty array why because we don't have any talk yet all right nevertheless we already have the basic get get it so next is that um, oh sorry I still need to create I still need to uh, create the create handler to create um, create handler here so the create handler basically says that um, I need I'm gonna need uh, I'm gonna need to parse a JSON body from this talk create data did I create a talk create data no. talk create oh I can rename it so I uh, this is basically saying that I am going to pass you a JSON that should matches this talk create data and after that you create the top object and then save it in the database. Alright, um, I guess we have to try it. Oops, sorry. I haven't registered the route here so I need to add the create handler. The route should be a post and if the post has a parameter oh, okay notice that there is a lot of uh, Xcode um, annoying stuff like this which I'm gonna talk on later create handler this looks to be okay so now I get all talks and I still get empty array and I'm going to create a new talk for example this is the talk that I'm creating and I'm actually getting a response body which the talk that I created and it's actually automatically assigned with ID number one so we can do another one uh, for example for three is awesome and Yep, I'm getting ID number two now, and then for example, this one is launch break, and then send request again, and I'm getting an ID number three. If I go back to the get all top, I should be getting all three. Awesome, right? <laughs> right. So just by like how many minutes pass already? Oh, okay, I'm almost run. Uh, 15 20 minutes you basically already have your own local host uh, API running now just to get everything quick right we're gonna need to add like three more one is the add get handler get handler means like uh, you get one talk based on the ID again you do it in the talks controller uh, here get handler if you are if you are getting one by uh, 
one talk by the ID, you can still use the future, but you don't really need to use like flat map or anything. It's just that uh, you you try to get the parameter itself, which is the top. And then um, for the update handler, we'll just add the update handler first. Update handler here. The update basically will try to parse your talk ID and then say that uh, since you are posting a new data of that same same talk, it's just gonna do the you know the plain old like um, uh, the old one equal to the new one. Okay, and then for the delete handler, as the example mentioned before, what you need to do is just like you search by the top ID, and then you do a top dot delete and transform to. You need to tell me whether it's okay or deleted or not, right? So after all this, remember, always always remember to register your route here. For example, just now the, the update is still using this one, right? Talk the parameter. Using update handler. Except for the delete, there's another special delete, but you still have to Capture it using this top parameter and use the handler. Right. Actually, right uh, when you create the object and you subclass it uh, from the parameter, if I command if I command this, right, it will it should throw me an error. Right, it's because when you subclass it to the parameter. Oh, sorry, when you want to post you need to subclass it to, from the parameters. Yeah, like that. Um, I think we can run it now. Why oh, still fail? Parameter. All right, so what we need to do now is first, uh, remember that we implemented the one get talk by ID. So we had three talks and then let's say I want to talk get the talk ID number two. What I need to do is just uh, get it wait, what happened? Did I run it? Oh yeah. Okay, this error actually really told you that there are two routes uh, Two that has the same route because I register here as a tox and did I also do the tox here? Yeah, I think I should comment it first. Post API. Oh, sorry, sorry. This one, <clears throat> this one seems to be the different. So if I want to get talk by ID number two, oh, wait, yeah. Update handler overriding route output at post API talk stop. Let me see from that. If I go to the API talks, I still get all three. Mm, let's see, how about the ID? One, two, three. It seems to be okay. Any idea? Yeah, get handler. I haven't created it yet. Good one. <laughs> get 
if I get talk about parameter, then I should use get handler. Nice one. Thanks for saving me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ah, nice. Um, yeah. So if you want to try to get talks that don't have the ID yet, it's gonna just by default throw an error. And then um, the same thing for uh, update handler. If you want to update talk by ID, let's say I want to update talk number two to be this title. So I'm just gonna post it and get the new one. Uh, reassign the new one and you get the old talk again and it's already changed to the one that I'm changing. Uh, the question here is that can you change the ID? Can I change the ID? If I try to change the ID, uh, let's say I want the ID to be now is number five. Five. And I send a request it's still returning me the ID number 2. So the answer is no, you cannot change the ID. And when you are deleting, you also need the ID. Uh, let's say I'm deleting ID number... I'm gonna get ID number 2. It's giving me okay, that means I assume that it's deleted already, right? Then we go back to get all top. What happened? The ID is the ID number two is skip. The ID number two is skip. Yeah. And the same thing if you try to delete ID that is not exist, it's just gonna give you error. So this is really like the nice thing about the fluent uh, ORM that it that comes built in with vapor. So yeah, in conclusion, right, as a, as a Swift developer who is using Swift day in and day out, um, I really think that I, uh, to be able to use Xcode and Swift to build a server-side API is really nice and I, I'm just like liking it, you know. I can, I don't need to learn a lot of new things. Uh, the, only, the only thing is that I just feel like it's very swiftly. Yeah, it's very swiftly. I still think that there's a lot of things that I'm gonna like about this paper uh, in in times to come. Uh, but there are also things that I feel like uh, meh. You know, uh, whenever paper there's a paper update, the the thing that makes me scared is uh, it actually breaks the existing code. For example, like uh, just like two days ago, I was still creating this thing and I, I'm I'm still following the the old one like request.parameter but as of like I think this afternoon suddenly they give me um, all this funny funny like warning and suddenly oh I should use parameters next now and I don't really know about it before and so I just like okay just try to fix it something like that yeah. so you have to be prepared of these sudden changes and then Xcode still lacks of autocomplete like it's not how you saw I, I was trying to Search for Fluent, My, MySQL, Lite, uh, MySQL, and this kind of thing, they still like of autocomplete. And then too many chaining may crash your Xcode. Um, like for example, when you try to uh, do a lot of flat map and then dot map, and then you want to flat map it again, it can actually crash Xcode. Uh, and the last thing is that when you uh, trust your database performance or migration to Vapor Fluent, that also means that you don't know about the database performance that they are actually how they are doing how they're indexing and stuff like that yeah but i believe that uh vapor team will improve all these you know tiny little bit uh, things that we have concern about yeah so just uh, the last slide uh, i'm just gonna share you some of the resources that uh, i think will be useful for you especially probably from this is the Slack group, they're highly, highly active. Even the paper creator himself is actually actively answering questions there. Because as you know, the documentation for 3.0 is really not accurate yet. Even as you speak right now, uh, there are so many tutorials up there and they are not really um, 
they're not really accurate. Uh. Yeah. But this is the very reason that I want to share with you uh, with a live demo so that you can uh, really see that hey, actually it's it can run and when you want to get started you can always rewatch this video again and uh, probably like better guarantee to run it. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's all. Uh, back to step. <laughs> for sharing with us about vapor okay, so does anybody have any questions for me now? Yeah. No one? Oh, okay, yeah. Do you have any great CMS problems? Definitely. Sorry? Definitely. Can. Can. Oh. It's... So you can do the bad Yes. They use a leaf, leaf templating engine. Okay, anyone else? Alright, uh, if you have any questions, Sabina, you can ask her later. Uh, after.